Hello, everyone. Welcome to this exciting transformational video, The Warrior Mindset. The Warrior Mindset. Now, I use warrior in the metaphor of athletics, you know, getting after it, being a soldier, just intense, wanting something so bad. I'm not talking about a warrior in relationship to what those that are protecting our country are doing, okay? Those in the military. So I want you to understand that right off the bat. Warrior mindset is a winning fighter mindset. See, you can win not only on the scoreboard, okay, but in life because people know you left everything out there. You didn't give up. You didn't quit. You didn't throw in the towel. You stayed the course. That's what a warrior is. We don't have a lot of those. And that's what I'm going to make you is into a warrior. That's what I'm coming alongside you to help you to get that warrior mindset. So key questions you have to ask yourself. Are you more of a warrior or a whiner? Like, just be honest with yourself. These are transformational questions. What types of battles have you been in? Here's some examples. Have you been in a battle to compete and make a team? Have you been in a battle to compete for a spot in the rotation? Have you been in a battle to compete for minutes? Have you been in a battle to compete for a team or individual postseason award? Have you been in a battle to try to get a college scholarship? Have you been in really major battles to try to win a championship? What about competing just to work on team chemistry? You know, team chemistry. And then what about battles within your team, your coaching staff for team success, team respect, team success, team respect? Did you win or lose? Did you succeed or fail? What did you learn from these battles? Did you, you know, like, did you move out of these battles early to avoid, you know, conflict and pain and, you know, some of the battle scars that might ensue from this major conflict? Well, this story that I'm going to tell you, I hope can relate to you because it was about me developing that warrior mindset, even though for many you'd say, well, you're at the top, you know, you're playing overseas in Europe. And so I'm overseas in Europe and I'm, and I get this call from one of my friends and he says, Hey man, you want to, uh, there's this all-star game that is comprised of a lot of the top teams from Europe. And then they form an all-star group of Americans that play on a bunch of different teams. And it's supposedly the biggest tournament in Europe. And I have a connection to try to get on this team. In fact, I just got selected. You ought to give this guy a call and see if there's a spot for you. So I said, yeah, okay. So I called the guy and I talked to him and he was kind of arrogant and he was like, well, where did you play? And I said, well, I played at a small, you know, four, a four-year college, um, NEI level. And, you know, he's just asking me questions, but he wasn't, he wasn't impressed because I, w I didn't play major division one. And he goes, and then he asked me where I was playing. And I told him and he goes, well, that, that's not, you know, at the highest level. It's okay, but it's not at that highest level, he goes, you know, we have a, a, the local team that's hosting the tournament. They have a team and they're, they usually just, they compete in the tournament just for fun as part of the whole thing. I can get you on that team. But on the American team, it's just too stacked and loaded. So I was kind of disappointed. I said, okay, left it. And uh, went there and competed, even went against 
the regular U.S. All-Star team and my friend who was on it. And we ended up, uh, we ended up, you know, we lost every game. But I did really well. I scored a lot of points. And even against the American team, I did really well. So then, you know, we go back. You go back to your team again. You're playing. And then my buddy contacts me again. He says, you know, you ought to, you, you, did, you had such a good performance, even though you were on that weaker, you know, kind of host team. Why don't you go ahead and uh, give them a call again? It's not going to hurt. Again, a warrior mindset is about stepping in to the fray, to the action, to maybe getting rejected. It was hard. So I called him back again and I said, hey, do you have a spot? What do you, you know, what do you think? And he's like, well, no, I don't, you know, I go, well, you saw I got 20 something points or whatever it was against the all-star team. I can compete with these guys. And I just kept pleading with him and talking to him. And he said, okay, I'll let you on the team. I'll put you on the squad. So I was elated. I let my friend know. We actually drove together. So left my wife home and, 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 and daughter. And so I went to this all-star, you know, tournament, it, now competing on, a, on, a, on one of the main teams. And it was like the time of my life. I mean, the practices were so intense, but these players were at another level. I mean, they they could jump higher, run faster. I mean, these were some of the top American players in Europe. And so I'm just playing, and I'm you know I'm first trying to make adjustments because it's like these guys are really good. And so I'm playing, but in my mind, I'm I'm always thinking like I can compete with these guys. What I can do is just as good as what they can do. Even though they're bigger, stronger, faster, can jump higher. You know, I, I, I still had that belief. God put that belief inside of me. Well, the All-Star game is, All-Star uh, tournament is going along. And game after game, it was like, you know, a few days, the tournament. I wasn't getting any playing time, you know, hardly at all. But every time I got in, I was like, Make an impact. Get some fire going. Really get some inspiration going. Make an impact. So I'd make an impact. And slowly as the tournament was going on, the players themselves, not the coach, the players were like gravitating. Like, this guy, okay, we like what we're seeing. You know, he's a baller even though he's a short guy. You know, so they, I started getting respect, right? Stayed in the battle, stayed in the battle. So the games are going on. And what he was doing is he was rotating pretty much everybody on the roster into the starting lineup to start like maybe the beginning of the first half or beginning of the second half. And so throughout the tournament, throughout the days that the tournament went on, he everybody got a chance to start except for me. So it was weird. So we get in, we're in the championship game. Um, we're playing uh, against this team from uh, Poland. And they're a really good team. Place was packed. It was jam-packed. It was like something you always dream of, to be in these kind of games, right? So again, the first half comes, and I kind of don't get much time. And uh, But when I get in there, I try to spark and everything. And I don't remember what the score was as we were headed into the second half. But during warm-ups in the second half, you know, the players were really going, like, Mendo, what? how come you're not getting a chance to start? Like, you should get a chance to start. Well, then the coach walked in. And the, this coach was a former NBA player. I'm not going to get into names a tall guy, and and so he walked out on the court, and he's going, okay, I want you, 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 yeah. And he didn't, he didn't choose me, so I was like, okay, whatever. And, and the other guys were going, hang in there, Mendo, just you know, stay strong, enjoy the experience, whatever. So I go, okay, so I go sit down. He, he, he puts me in the game, you know, kind of in the second half, and I play a couple minutes again. I try to spark the team, do the same thing, and then and then well, that's it, right? Sit back down. And I'm realizing, like, you know, and I'm so frustrated because, and I'm calling home every night, talking to my wife. My wife's t telling me, be an example. Be an example. You're going to get your breakthrough. God's going to do something amazing. She kept encouraging me. And I kept believing, but I was getting down. And I just sat down. I go, okay, you know what? Guess what? From, from not even being on the team, trying to prove myself last year, now I'm on the team with these guys. It's going to be nip and tuck. But, you know, hopefully we can win this game. And I get to watch this amazing game unfold. So I just sat back and just like, okay, i got to be a good teammate, respect my guys, 
pump them up, and let's see what happens. Well, they had a point guard out there our, for the American team, and he was really good. In fact, he led his club team to the national championship at the highest level. And he was out there, and he was playing, and was going, and everything was going good. And we're, I'm just watching this game, and bam, he comes down on his ankle. He makes a move, he cuts, and, he, and, and he's down for the count. And everybody's around him, and, you know, they bring the medical team in. And I'm just watching. I'm just going, oh, my gosh, I felt so bad for him because this was a big game. He wanted to play in it. Players were all upset and everything. And so I didn't know what was going on. And he was done for the game. And so everybody kind of sat back down, and Coach just walked down the bench. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, he's going to put somebody else in or whatever. And he points to me. And he goes, go in the game. Don't make a mistake. Take care of the basketball. I was just like really negative, right? But he, he said, go in the game. Next thing you know, I'm thrust into literally the biggest game of my life. And I played in big high school games, other all-star games, tournaments in college. You know, I played in big games, but nothing like this with this kind of competition. So I'm just out there, you know, trying to survive. Staying alive, staying alive. I'm talking, uh, uh, uh. Uh, I'm like, whoa, this is incredible. Playing, and I'm just going for it. Game's coming down to the wire. And one of our players gets fouled. A guy from, I believe it was from West Virginia, Virginia, like 6'11", and he gets fouled going to the hoop. It was like 11 seconds left. And he walks into the huddle, and this is how these Division One guys, he's going like, man, I got this. Like, don't even worry about these two. And I'm thinking, man, I'd never say that, even though I'd have confidence. I'd never say, he goes, I got these two. And so the coach is saying, okay, if we make these two, we have a one-point lead. If we miss these two, this is what we have. It, you know, if we, if we make one and miss one, no, we are down by two. If we make one and miss one, this is what we're in. Down by two, excuse me. Because so I'll make these two to tie it up. And so get out there. And so the thing was, you know, if we, if we made one or if we missed both, we were going to be in full court press. So I was just getting ready to just kind of guard my man, face guard him, don't let him catch the ball. First shot, he shoots. He misses. It's like, oh, man. Okay. Second shot, he shoots. Dead swish. He makes it. So now everything's frantic. It's like 11 seconds left. And they're taking the ball and bounds. And I'm guarding my man at half court, right? Like, so I'm there and, and I'm just face guarding him, face guarding him, face guarding him. I don't really even kind of know what's going on behind me. I'm just trying not to let him catch the ball. He's moving around a little bit, but he's kind of in that corner by where our teams are at. So he he comes and, and so, so the ball gets in bounds and then the ball is thrown somehow over my head. He was trying to hit him over my head, bouncing towards our sideline, and there was a player. He looked exactly like Larry Bird from San Diego State. He came from, literally from the other side. He could see it, and he sprinted. I mean, like, I couldn't get, like, this guy was, like, like, took three steps, and he was trying to get the ball because I, 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 I think we tipped it, and he was falling out of bounds, going out of bounds, trying to save the ball. Oh, are you with me? And so I'm running right to the ball, just my natural instinct of being a closer, loving clutch moments, just in the moment, I sprint to the ball. Ball, 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 ball. He turns, he's in here, he can't pass it to anybody else. He, there's nobody, he, his eyes can only look at one place. He passes it to me. I catch it. Now it's going down, six, five. I take off with a dead sprint right to the to the key area as fast as I could. And and I'm running, in order, and I'm just zigzagging, I don't know what, and I come right up out to the elbow, and I pick up the ball and I pull up and a guy comes flying to try to block my shot. I give just a teeny little fake to let him fly by. Three, two, I shoot it. One, bam. Nothing but net. We win the game. My hands go up in the air just like ecstatic. I'm just screaming, I told you guys, blah, blah, blah. We could, you know, you, you know, you gave up on me, but I, you know, I God didn't give up on me. I didn't give up on myself. Here we are. We run around. All my teammates, you know, they're on top of me. 
Go and and then my buddy's looking at me. He goes, Nando, I dreamed this last night. He, tears are getting in his eyes. And every all my teammates around me, we just won the championship. We won the tournament. It's over. And so it was a great, great moment. But it required tenacity. Forget about, forget about hitting the game winner. That's great. Forget about that. But it was about being there in the moment, in the moment. And so when we think about that, you know, we think about, you know, things like this, moments like this require tenacity. And here are my success points. Warrior believing. Never stop believing that you can come through in that moment, that you can be a part of it. Warrior waiting. It's one thing to believe, but then to wait, it's hard. I had to persevere all through two years to finally get to that moment. And then warrior winning. You're not going to settle until you win. Until you win. Warrior believing, warrior waiting, warrior winning. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give in. Never stop believing that with God's grace, you can make anything happen. Always show your warrior paint and not makeup. In other words, come to battle. People are watching you. I hope this video inspired you, got you excited to think about how you're going to apply these principles and about that special magic moment that is waiting for you if you apply those special warrior points, where you're believing, where you're waiting, and where you're winning. Let me know about it because I'm coming alongside you and expecting greatness from you. Talk to you soon.